Welcome to the Horizon DeFi podcast, where we explore DeFi, synthetic assets, and the potential impact they will have on our economy. I am our host, Stanton, the Education Director of the Horizon Protocol Project, and welcome to our second episode. Today, we will be exploring Synthetics, the project that Horizon Protocol based itself off of. We will be joined by Jay, one of the core team members of Horizon Protocol. Welcome, Jay. Hi, thanks for having me back. So today, our conversation is going to be around Synthetics. Synthetics is a project that is on the Ethereum blockchain, and they're focused on synthetic assets. The first question I really want to ask about is, why did we choose to fork Synthetics? Uh, good question. To my understanding, the reason why the team chose to fork Synthetics was, I mean, at the time, they were the top synthetic asset platform. And it, not only because of they just had the biggest market cap or whatever, but because they were very disciplined in terms of their development and their um, approach to developing the protocol. You know, everything they've done was very uh, transparent and their documentation was very great. And uh, we really respected that. And we felt that um, we could take the project um, and also try to take it in another way to help um, improve this space as well. What are some of the things that we're trying to do in terms of taking the project in a different direction? So, yeah, one of the biggest setbacks we felt the synthetics community had and 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 this whole synthetic asset space in general has is just lack of awareness and lack of understanding because due to the complexity of the protocol and the way of trying to achieve decentralized derivatives, which is, it sounds simple on when you just say it like that, but when you get into the details about actually decentralizing, you know, crypto derivatives and all this stuff, you get into very complex systems. And um, I think where we find ourselves trying to improve upon is the user journey into this space. I think from crypto into DeFi is already quite a big bridge for people to cross. But then there's another bridge even within the DeFi world that goes from, you know, using Uniswap to doing like crypto derivatives and synthetic assets and hedging positions and and doing all of these other things that um, exist in the derivatives world. So our goal mostly is to try to improve and bring more people into this area and make it easier for people to access this area of DeFi. I completely agree that the initial products out of DeFi was around lending and borrowing and just general trading. And synthetic assets is on a completely different level in terms of the amount of education and, and um, knowledge that needs to be had to understand how to leverage it. That's also part of the reason why I was brought on board to help explore more on the education side of things. So. I want to take a really quick step back, just in case any of the audience does not know what Synthetics is. Jay, would you be able to help me with a quick introduction of what Synthetics is and what they do? Sure. Um, Synthetics, in a nutshell, I would say is a liquidity protocol that allows you to create derivatives or synthetic assets. So it's just a mechanism that allows people to essentially provide liquidity and back the creation of synthetic assets. That is what synthetics is at its core. And then on top of that, you can utilize those synthetic assets into different financial instruments. For example, you could do futures trading, spot trading, longing, shorting, options trading. So these are all the different utilities that, that are built on top of these synthetic assets. Synthetics has a distributed team model, right? Where all the different layers that you're saying, for example, trading or options, futures, all of that exists separate from Synthetics as a platform, but they have their own name as a product. Is that correct? Yeah. So Synthetics themselves, to my knowledge, is they just focus on their core liquidity protocol for backing the synthetic assets and supporting the um the ability to have financial instruments that utilize these synthetic assets. But I think when it comes to actually the platforms that allow for the trading and for allow for the users to interact with, those platforms are separate projects that are backed by the synthetics protocol like Treasury and Team. 
Yeah, I believe the other projects on synthetics is Quenta. Quenta is their biggest one. That's their trading or their exchange, their DEX. So that's similar to Horizon Protocols Exchange. And the other one that they have that's more well known is Lyra, their options platform. Those are two examples of projects that I think um, Synthetics has uh, incubated or funded. And then they're separate teams from the Synthetics protocol. It's it's pretty smart in many ways because it, it separates responsibility and allows them to run more, um, run smaller teams instead of building too much bulk. Mm, yeah. But I, I, I don't know. I have a theory that it's like all the same people. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. Like they all have to connect with each other and talk a lot. One one thing I was thinking, because um, we're building everything ourselves, the big difference might be that because of our strong focus on user experience mm. as a team, the products that we put out, whether or not it's the exchange or the options or futures in the future, huh, we're going to be tailoring it more towards um, user experience and trying to figure out how to make sure that users know how to use it. Because these tools or instruments they are very powerful and they're also very dangerous. I think in a lot of the trading community, let's just say, for example, Wall Street bets, they love trading options, calls and puts. But I mean, in many ways, if you don't know how to leverage it properly, it's essentially gambling because you're betting on something happening in the next couple of days or a couple of months. And a call or a put for options is essentially a hugely leveraged trade where if you are right, you'll make a ton of money, but if you're wrong, you lose a ton of money. So those are dangerous instruments. And I think yeah, same from with our the, perspective, futures, right? Like with futures, you could do like 10 X leverage and stuff. So it just gets, you know, exponentially increases the risk and reward. Yeah. The next thing I want to kind of dive into is recently synthetics has been on the, in the news quite a bit because they've started to uh, make a lot of money via trading fees. There was a graph that came out in August that showed um, Synthetics making 62% of their revenue um, through one inch. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, I thought that was um, quite incredible. And uh, I congratulate Synthetics on their success on that. I think it's um, it shows a very clear use case for synthetics also as a form of their business model for their users who stake synthetics. Can you explain more about how that relationship works? Why is one inch using synthetics and why is that generating so much trade uh, trading revenue? Well, essentially what one inch does is they're a DEX aggregator. When a user inputs a trade between two assets, one inch is responsible with through their smart contracts to find the best price with the least slippage and to get the best result for the user, the cheapest route, essentially. And in this scenario, they integrated Synthetics Exchange or Quenta, I guess, but it's still the Synthetics smart contracts to utilize the exchange to get the best trade for certain trading pairs. So for example, maybe if you're trading between Bitcoin and Ethereum, one inch could potentially route that uh, transaction through the Synthetics Exchange because the Synthetics Exchange has no slippage on their trades because they use the uh, global liquidity pool that trade that everyone who trades on Synthetic Exchange trades against, which are backed by the Synthetics SNX token holders. And because there's no slippage, you could potentially get um, a better price than if you just use like a Uniswap liquidity pool or another DEX, for example. So I believe that um, could because they have um, high liquidity on their synthetics, their synths, their Ethereum and Bitcoin and um, USD synths on Curve. So between Curve and their Synthetics Exchange, they can actually create, one inch can create a route that provides better results for their users than just using normal liquidity pools, for example. So if you're trading between Bitcoin and Ethereum, they might convert your ETH to synthetic ETH via Curve and then convert your synthetic ETH to synthetic Bitcoin via synthetic exchange and then convert that uh, synthetic Bitcoin back to real Bitcoin via Curve again. And then that might be a cheaper route than to use a liquidity pool 
that is just going directly between the two because maybe that liquidity pool has insufficient liquidity if you're using high volume, for example, or a high, uh, like a large trading amount. So there's actually a huge financial incentive for this, for others to use um, synthetics for the trade. Number one is obviously the trading fees will be lower, but most importantly, it's a slippage because with a global trading pool, you can leverage the entire liquidity of the pool for this, allowing to have larger trades without affecting the price of the of the asset that you're trading. Yeah, exactly. So like, let's say you're moving a million dollars between Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, maybe on Uniswap. I don't know the liquidity pool, if there is one that goes directly from ETH to like wrap Bitcoin, but you might suffer some pretty huge slippage. Plus there's like a, you know, maybe a pretty sizable um, exchange fee. But with Curve, because it's a stable coin DEX, they have really low trading fees, you know, like 0.04% or whatever. And then on the synthetics exchange part, um, they have no slippage. So you combine those two, you can get pretty good. I don't know the like technical term for it, but like um, pricing with low fees. How does Horizon Protocol get to where synthetics is in terms of being able to be leveraged in the same way where other platforms like One Inch or anybody else like that would be interested in using Horizon Protocol as a essentially a transition protocol for trading? So, I mean, we're actively working towards achieving that kind of level of integration. Um, but there's many, there's quite a few steps uh, between where we're at now and, um, and achieving that kind of integration. But it's um, the fees that Synthetics generates is not, doesn't all just come from one inch, for example, but um, they also, you know, they, because they have uh, Quenta and then Lyra and all these other layers that these also generate fees. So from Horizon Protocol's perspective, we're trying to um, essentially create more ways to earn revenue for the protocol. And currently, uh, the team is quite heavily focused on trying to get a the futures exchange out because we believe that the futures exchange will be more popular in the DeFi community and give more options to essentially more flexibility to long and short and you know use margin and other things to benefit on off the price action of all the synthetic assets that we uh, list in the protocol not only do we need to do that but we need to increase liquidity on the secondary markets such as you know like um, stable coin dexes and normal dexes but we also need to work harder on increasing awareness and understanding of the synthetic asset space we need to bring more people into this area, make people aware of the immense opportunities that synthetic assets bring. A lot of the DeFi that is popularly used right now is, you know, it's it's almost like the layer ones of DeFi, you know, like things like Uniswap and, you know, Aave, borrow lending. But once you get into the realm of synthetic assets, then you take every, you take DeFi to like, you know, the layer two, the next level, which is, now you can do so many more things. You can, you know, invest in more intelligently. You have more tools at your disposal to hedge, to short, to, you know, to use margin. You have all these capabilities. What's preventing a lot of people that are just not aware of how it works or they're afraid of it or they don't understand it because it's too complex. So, I mean, that's one of the missions of Horizon Protocol is to really, you know, create a bridge for this, for these people to get into this space in a, in a way that they understand and they feel secure about it so that, and also to learn about it because, you know, it's one thing to have access to these tools, but it's a totally other thing to use these tools in a way that can benefit you in a responsible way. So I think that's an equally important part. And that's something that Horizon Protocol really cares about and what we're focusing on. And that's also like, you know, that's one reason why we are, uh, we want to be a part of this podcast is because we want to help this out to increase awareness on this and education and, and help people understand what's going on in, in this space. That's, I think that's perfectly said, because very much what we're trying to do with the podcast is to disseminate more information and education around these harder topics in DeFi. So we're running this podcast with that mission in mind. 
every decision we make internally is focused around how can we make this more accessible? How can we make、uh, more people understand the details and build the knowledge around it so they can better、um, leverage and use synthetic assets? So, I think that is a very powerful point on how we're approaching this. Yeah, I think it's a very important point that we should definitely focus on because, you know, like synthetics is like super tech focused and like they're not really there to like you know babysit people like new to the space and get people in you know whatever they're not doing any of that. <laughs> so I think that's an opportunity for us because、um, I think for I mean the synthetic asset space in general it's a pretty niche area that is underexposed and、um, a lot of people. Aren't really focused on you know make the pie bigger instead of、uh, just focusing on the tech or whatever. So, I completely agree. Is there anything preventing us from being leveraged? I, I use the word leverage, but it's confusing sometimes because it also means you know like ten x margin leverage kind of thing. But is there anything preventing other projects like One Inch from leveraging Horizon Protocol right now in terms of doing the same thing as Synthetics? Are there any projects that's preventing Horizon Protocol? Yeah. So, so what I'm going for is remember you told me about the Oracle、um, two minute delay thing. Oh, I mean that's something unique to you know our protocol. I don't necessarily think that there's other projects. I think you know actually one of the things I'm you know working on right now is、um, is actively trying to understand because if you look on Optimism. For synthetics, the layer two implementation、mm-hmm. that they have, and their exchange there, they don't have any oracle waiting period at all, zero. And the reason for that is because the blockchain is sufficiently fast enough that it prevents a lot of the front running opportunities. But I looked up Optimism's like speeds and stuff, and it's quite similar to what BNB chain is, <laughs> interestingly. And like you know, I've been wondering actually because I don't know how. Exactly the formula that Synthetics uses to determine the like Oracle duration. I know they set it to like six minutes on Ethereum, and we set it to two on BNB Chain, but that was arbitrary. <laughs> By the way, I actually don't one hundred percent understand how they arrive at that number. If there's a form, what formula they use or what metrics they measure in order to determine what that should be, but there's a possibility that we could set it to zero on on our chain as well, and That would significantly reduce friction、um, for people trading on exchange, but I need to be like concrete, one hundred percent certain of the risks and like all that before I would ever do something like that. And I'm not one hundred percent there yet, but it's like it's on my like to do of things that I want to solve for our project. Imagine if we had zero waiting period, that would make it one easier for one inch to integrate. Into us, like significantly easier. Synthetics developed an entire smart contract base called Atomic Swaps, just to have the ability to remove the Oracle fee period time on Ethereum network. And even though Optimism is fast and they have no Oracle fee period, they still don't have Atomic Swaps there. They don't have the like one inch and you know integrating them on Optimism. And the main reason for that is because they don't have the liquidity like they do on Ethereum. So it's not just using the exchange, synthetics exchange, and having no like low oracle times or no no oracle waiting times. It's also the on ramps and off ramps of liquidity that they have on Curve that exists on Ethereum but not on Optimism. Because if someone wants to trade like ETH to Bitcoin. They would need to. They need the liquidity pool, a, a sufficiently sized liquidity pool, to go from ETH to SETH, and then they once they're in the synthetic asset space, they can go from SETH to SBTC easily with no slippage because of the way it works. And then, they, but then they have to get back to normal wrap Bitcoin from synthetic Bitcoin. So you need another liquidity pool there. So the whole lo- like one inch using synthetic exchange is literally only wor- it only works for like two coins. Like it doesn't like I think for three coins synthetics USD, ETH and BTC it doesn't work for any of the other synthetic assets that they have because they don't have the liquidity on ramps for that, and off ramps. So, that's an equally important part of the equation that 
you know, which is one of the hurdles that I wanted to discuss other than developing the futures and whatever, which was the liquidity hurdles that we need to work on. And that's also why we recently launched the um, ZBNB BNB pool is to slowly build up these on ramps. So the main difference between synthetics on the Ethereum chain and on the Optimism chain is the liquidity, which means that for Horizon Protocol, our our main goal is really to build liquidity aside from all the development that we're doing. And if we can get liquidity to a certain level, then we also have the same opportunities as synthetics in terms of additional trading fees, especially partnering with other projects that are uh, that can leverage low slippage, low fees to convert between different trades. That sounds amazing for Horizon Protocol's future in terms of what is possible because Horizon Protocol is still probably the most mature synthetics protocol on the BNB chain. And so the last question I want to have, I want to ask today is just to explore a little bit, what is the difference right now between the Ethereum blockchain ecosystem and the BNB chain ecosystem? So yeah, um, I just wanted to jump in and also just back to your original statement, which I just want to be clear on the liquidity portion, which is um, there's a difference between the liquidity and uh, that's staked in Horizon Protocol via HCN, which certainly um, we want to increase. But I think in terms of the one inch use case that they were, you were talking about previously, the liquidity that's on the open market is is equally as important, in my opinion. So Horizon Protocol is also um, focused on trying to increase the liquidity of our pairs on the open market as well, or secondary markets in this case, which is, you know, for example, the SUSD, BUSD pool on Pancake and the ZBNB, BNB pool on Ellipsis. Um, the, these on and off ramps are, are critical to this integration. And um, we're definitely value like are focused on trying to increase the liquidity there as well and then um i guess to your main question the differences between to um, ethereum and bnb chain bnb chain is basically i mean i don't want to speak on behalf of bnb chain they probably know better than anyone on this but i mean they were originally kind of like a a fork of ethereum because they're evm compatible but they just kind of redid their consensus mechanism in a way that is it's much more centralized, but quicker. They were very smart in terms of their timing when they entered the market, because at that time, I remember Ethereum was suffering severely from um, ridiculously high fees and slow transactions. And um, I mean, I was a victim of it as well. So when I found this on ramp and and then pancake swap and all this stuff, it was uh, it was quite a relief, actually. But since then, they've developed like, you know, a very significant DeFi community and and Binance is one of the biggest players in the space. So they're 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 one of the most trusted players. So yeah, I mean they're more centralized, but you know, what you give up in centralization, you gain in like, you know, convenience and and speed and growth, I so I would say. I think we can both generally agree that our long term vision is is full decentralization, but BNB chain in many ways is is a requirement for us to get there because most of the world is still not on blockchain. And convenience is incredibly important to connect the real world with the crypto world. So I think the amount of work that Binance does just from their centralized exchange um, perspective and also trying to build a, a secondary blockchain essentially as, as a hedge against anything that might go wrong with other blockchains is important. Do you think that the BNB chain will have enough liquidity for us to really establish Horizon Protocol to have the same kind of exchange fees as synthetics on Ethereum? Yes, I, I absolutely believe that because I know also know Binance is extremely committed towards developing the ecosystems and their and the BNB chain as well. And to my knowledge, I think the goal of BNB chain is also to achieve the level of decentralization as Ethereum, you know, in the long term. So as with a lot of like new crypto projects, they, they're they kind of forced to start off a little centralized and then slowly decentralize over time because they have to kind of bootstrap the system and, and uh, get things running and work out the kinks before it can be, you know, quote unquote, released to the wild. 
So I absolutely believe that um, BNB chain, I think will be like the second largest DeFi ecosystem outside of Ethereum. And um, as this, this whole space grows, there will absolutely be enough liquidity in this uh, chain to support um, Horizon Protocol in any kind of integration like this. Yeah, I think what the numbers that we're looking at right now is going to be like so small compared to what is could be in the future that it'll be, you know, it'll be silly to even think that this couldn't even happen, in my opinion. I don't know if you want to put that last bit in there because it sounds kind of like idealistic, but... <laughs> That's completely fine. We are as a team, we should be very idealistic in <laughs> what our vision is. And, and this is really But I'm super partly... bullish on the future of this space in general. Like there's no way this space is going away. And it's just like, yeah, like we're in a bear market, or whatever, but like long term, it's like it, the space is only growing. So it's I I completely agree. Um, even even though it's I mean, the bear market is really a product of the entire global economy right now. Honestly, in general, the bear market is a good thing for the entire crypto market because it really does wipe out a lot of the projects that are not designed to be or not funded to be long term. So obviously, we all want the bull market to be back, but a bear market is important for the uh, market to be generally healthy. Yeah, it washes away like, you know, the bad stuff and the good stuff can survive and continue and it's a cleansing process. It's an important step. Yeah. And since we're part of the good stuff, we'll be surviving. Yeah, that's that's the plan. <laughs> In that case, I think we'll end it here. We've had a lot of content for today going through synthetics and kind of um, how they're making a lot of their money now uh, as a protocol, what Horizon Protocol needs to do to kind of get to a similar place and also a bit of um, exploration and difference between Ethereum and BNB chain. I think we went through a lot. So thank you very much, Jay, for being with us today. Thanks, Danton, for having me. And we'll see everyone next time. 